Like many families trapped in quarantine, we have been desperately looking for things to do. And one of the things we decided to do here towards the end is play some classic board games. So we ended up breaking out the good old fashioned family favorite, Operation. But there are no stakes in Operation, right? If you mess up, you mess up, it's the next person's turn. So we decided to kick it up a little bit by adding a tens unit so that whenever you mess up, it shocks the crap out of you. Enjoy. Waiting for a minute. Oh, Jesus, startled might, the hell out of me. You might not want to get that close. <laughs> God, you're scaring me. <laughs> 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 I'm not. I, I don't. I don't think I was touching it. This is the sound of a broken man. God! <laughs> oh, I'm so close. All right, so this was a lot of fun to build, and I'm going to run you through quickly kind of the different ins and outs that I did. So the game board to get the kind of the cover off to really get to the guts, I had to drill out those plastic rivets, and then the uh, cardboard popped right off. And then it's really just like three screws and a couple of tabs to disassemble that unit right there. And then that metal plate, you know, that's actually what you're making contact with, with the tweezers that activates all the buzzing and everything like that. <clears throat> so you pop that out. Really, everything just kind of pulls right out. Some of it's held in with tabs. So looking at the motor, whenever you press his nose in, it actually uh, activates it. So it'll go ahead and um, uh, kind of do the buzz. So here I'm just moving my probes around, testing on different points, and then hitting that button just to see where ultimately um, I want to hook this thing up is. So here you can see that... Uh, these are the two points I found so you could duplicate this yourself So you push the button and those two points go live whenever they're uh, You know whenever you're hooked up there and nothing's going on. There's no uh, voltage going through Here I just drill a quick hole in the bottom of the case tie a knot in uh, the wire so that it can't pull back through <clears throat> Tighten that guy up. So it's kind of strain relief there. So you don't rip the, the wires out. I'm using cat 5 e you know, stranded Cat5. I love using this stuff because it's hardy. It's really inexpensive. You get a whole lot of it on a roll. And uh, it's also color-coded, right? So it makes keeping things separate simple. Whenever I'm going to solder stuff together like this, a lot of times I'll do what you just saw right there, which is I'll tin the wires, and that's just put a little solder on ahead of time. And then uh, I'm going to connect them to the points and hit them with the iron. Here I'm using some forceps. Man, if, if you guys do soldering and you don't have forceps, you should really get your a set. I mean, they're, they're useful for a lot of different things, getting down inside of stuff, but uh, tweezers sometimes let go, whereas these forceps hold tight, so you can get in there without burning your fingers, for sure. It makes things simple. <clears throat> Completing this off, I just uh, solder both ends and then kind of push the wires in, finagle them around so they'll be out of the way. That way, when I put the cover back on, nothing gets... Uh, messed up and again you can see I'm pulling on the wire nothing moves always remember strain relief sometimes a good trick is to use uh, zip ties inside for strain relief here you can see I ran the wire out of the bottom of the case you can kind of see it striped down there and then just snap everything in place put the uh, metal cover on and just really kind of put everything back in put the screws back in really simple process so since I drilled out those rivets I made little washers here with some plumber's tape, you know, like plumber steel tape. In the end, I ended up using a combination of these little washers along with screws. And then um, some of the screws I accidentally drilled out too big, so I used bolts. And the bolts actually came out looking much better. And if I wasn't so lazy, I probably would screw or rather drill them all out and just use those bolts. 
for a much cleaner look. So you can see the bolts up there towards the top. Here, putting a hole really quick through the edge of the case so that I can run the wires up through and I just kind of snake everything through to make it look a little bit cleaner. I say look cleaner. I leave everything exposed at the top because I really like the way circuits look when you make them all raw. So what I did with that is I ran the two wires into an Arduino. You saw it blinking there as I was um, touching the nose. And here, <clears throat> you could probably hear the relay quick as I actuate um, actuate the, uh, the buzzer part. So here I added a 200 millisecond delay. So every time this Arduino detects any voltage come through this thing, it adds a 200 millisecond delay. So that means you're gonna get shocked for 200 milliseconds minimum, even if you barely touch it, it's gonna go for 200 milliseconds. That's kind of the sweet spot I found. Here you can see I'm soldering on way more pin headers than I'm actually uh, needing, because it kind of gives stability to it, because I'm gonna put it into some perf board here in a second. So this is an Arduino Pro Mini. I like these guys. They don't have a USB interface, so you have to use kind of a serial to TTL cable, but I like it because one, they're cheaper, and two, they occupy less space, they're smaller. So here I'm cleaning those guys up a little bit. You can see I use an X-Acto blade there as well. So whenever I'm doing circuits, if I want to clean up the connections and make sure there's nothing touching, you can just run an X-Acto blade a few times through there and it'll cut any solder out. So you can see I've got a five volt relay and then I've got that little green screw terminal there. I got those screw terminals, I think from AliExpress, big bag of them, super cheap. And they are crazy convenient for, uh, attaching and uh, detaching things so when you're testing. Here you can see I'm using a little bit of silicone wire. I prefer that sometimes as opposed to the Cat5 because it's really soft, really flexible. Again, <laughs> AliExpress buy, you can get uh, like five little spools in a, in a self-feeding box for just a few bucks on there. It's really good. I never use much of it, so it ends up lasting forever. Here's the final touches on soldering. You can see I'm soldering the two leads that come from the motor. So whenever the motor activates, there's two double A's that gives you three volts. Those three volts feed into the microcontroller. It senses that, and that's where all the magic happens. And then whenever it does sense the voltage, 200 milliseconds, it's gonna activate that relay. So I'm going to take one of the leads of the TENS units, cut it, and basically put the relay in the middle of it. So it's kind of a on-off switch for the TENS unit. You can see me going back through an X-Acto blade. Again, I like that retractable one, super convenient. I don't accidentally stab myself nearly as much. Again, on the left, right there under my left wrist, you could see the, uh, the lead for the TENS unit where I tied it into a little bit more uh, Cat5 cabling so that I could uh, make it kind of a longer extension. So that TENS unit, that little module plugs into the unit itself and then you've got two little sticky pads you put on your arm and then you uh, attach the end of the leads onto it. So one of the very last things I added to this was when I was in the shower that morning before we played, I came up with the idea of a progressive mode. And the idea of progressive means every time you get shocked, it adds an additional 200 milliseconds onto it and so it just keeps adding up more and more and more. So it starts at 200, then it goes four, six, eight, 10 and uh, you want to go to progressive mode, you just flip the switch right there. And then you can start the game. So one shock. You can see how it progressively increases infinitely. It never stops. And then if you want to go back to standard mode, you just switch it back and it goes back to 200 milliseconds. Here's a last look at the completed unit with the probes and the tin unit and the pads. It was a lot of fun to make, not as much fun to play. Uh, thanks for watching.